I'm uh, John Blasco. I'm a radiation oncologist from Seattle, Washington, and uh, my interest in my career has been involved with prostate cancer treatment, specifically with the development of prostate seed implantation or brachytherapy. That's something that I started in uh, about 1985 and uh, probably did about 6,000 cases over my career. Dr. Blasco, you treated your first brachytherapy patient back in 1985. You must now have many patients first treated 20 plus years ago. How do you feel the long-term data are holding up? Have they met or exceeded your original expectations? We're very pleased with the outcomes. When I first started doing this uh, in the 1980s, there was a pre predecessor for this treatment, which was the open retropubic implants. And the results from that after about five years were fairly poor and the treatment was almost abandoned before we started with the new technology of ultrasonography and a much more accurate way of placing seeds. But early on, we weren't sure whether the treatment would work. And as a kind of a young practitioner just starting this, I would have nightmares of these long lines of patients with recurrences waiting to see me afterwards. And fortunately that never materialized and uh, treatments themselves worked out better than we had hoped for. And today, now after 20 years of experience with it in multiple centers all over the world, a treatment that's now uh, done all over the world, we're very gratified to see that the cure rates are at least as good as any other treatment. There have been many changes in brachytherapy technique over the years. We know you personally retired from clinical practice in 2007. But what do you now believe is the best form of brachytherapy for the average patient? There certainly have been a lot of changes and there will be probably a lot more changes as, as time goes by that we're not yet aware of. When I compare our early experience and the kind of equipment and technology we had to, to place the seeds and all the unknowns about the amount of radiation that was tolerable, the amount needed for cure, the amount that would cause uh, complications, and none of these factors were known. Through the development of transrectal ultrasonography, its refinement, its ability to see more accurately, more completely, and the introduction of other imaging modalities as CT scans and MRI scans, etc., there have been a great number of people throughout the, uh, the United States that have contributed to this knowledge base. And so each generation goes by, there's been further and further improvement uh, in the procedure and in the outcomes as, as well with it. Where we'll go in the future is, remains to be seen, but I think it's uh, certainly something that with other imaging modalities uh, is, is bound to continue to be a very important part of uh, the prostate cancer puzzle. Far as selecting patients concerned, uh, I think we have learned that some patients may not be good candidates for seed implants or brachytherapy. And there's a variety of details that we always look at for, in each patient to try to determine a, is this an appropriate cancer for this type of treatment? For example, you would not want to treat a patient who has cancer that's obviously spread outside the prostate uh, with seeds. It should be within the prostate as far as we can tell. Secondly, there's a whole host of factors that you might look at from a patient's prostate size, urination ability, which might make them better or worse candidates for brachytherapy from a side effect or morbidity standpoint. For example, a patient with a very large prostate that's causing obstruction and blockage of his urination, so he has slow, difficult urination, those patients generally make poor candidates for brachytherapy. Because when you put seeds in a prostate, it always results in some swelling of the prostate and, and further blockage, and those are the patients that can have great urinary difficulty and I think are often better treated by other methods. So although a large number of patients will have brachytherapy as an option. There are some patients, I think, that are better served uh, by other treatment methods. Do you see real potential in the concept of focal brachytherapy? It's a question that's come up in the last few years, uh, riding on the heels of other focal therapies. My own opinion is, is that I don't think it would be a good modality for focal therapy. And the reason is, is that most focal therapies are based on the premise that, okay, let's treat one spot, and then if another spot should pop up in another year or two, then you go and treat that spot. And so that you can keep picking off these small spots uh, as time goes by. The problem with brachytherapy is that the treatment does not stop in the immediate area. It tends to go a little further. So you can treat the one area once, but then what happens if there's a next time? 
it would be very difficult to safely go back and overlap these kinds of treatments. Now, you could argue that you could go on to different treatments, but so I think that as a focal treatment, I don't think brachytherapy would be a good idea. There is a relative of this, however, that I think should be explored, and that's the idea of treating the entire prostate, but modulating the, the brachytherapy dose to be higher in certain parts of the prostate and lower it in other parts, where today we generally treat the whole prostate to an even dose. So I think there may be a role of modulating the dose within the prostate to emphasize certain areas of the prostate, but yet still treat the entire prostate to some degree. And that, I think, has, has potential, but not yet explored. What are your concerns for the future? I think right now what our biggest struggle is, in my opinion, is that brachytherapy is being performed by a variety of clinicians throughout the country, and that sometimes they take this treatment on in a half-hearted way. And so the quality of their work suffers. So I think that the immediate problem is to get everyone trained and experienced enough so that there are many centers in which patients can confidently know that there will be a good job being done. And that there really is no mechanism of doing that. And it's not only in brachytherapy, but a lot of medicine, there's really no way of really establishing who does a really good job uh, of the treatment. So one of the main things I'm currently involved with is trying to help people do a better job in their brachytherapy so that all patients can have access to, to quality care because there are still examples of, of poor implantation that goes along. I think the further development that we're looking for is to help people, you know, to do better implants. For example, one of the innovations that's occurred in the last five years is the development of so-called intraoperative planning. The traditional and standard way of doing a seed implant is to measure the prostate before the procedure, figure out how many seeds you need and what their geometry needs to be, to order that number of seeds, and then bring the patient into the operating room several weeks later and carry out this plan. Well, this involves several steps that are rather delicate, and some physicians have trouble getting accuracy along the way. So the intraoperative planning allows the physician to bring the patient into the operating room, do all of this planning work on the, the time, and do what's called real-time planning. It takes longer in the operating room, but I think it gives the cl clinician better feedback. And so for people who are not really experienced, I think this is a superior way to go. Likewise, other imaging modalities, being able to use MRI in a, in a more uh, facile way would be very helpful to be able to see the structures more accurately uh, than they, people can today. So I think further technologic refinement to make it easier for people to do a good job with the implants is, is what I'm looking forward to, is to kind of increasing the quality overall.